What is up guys, my name is Sox for one and we will be surviving another 100 days in the largest mod pack possible in hardcore. I really want to make this even a thousand day series, so please leave a like on this video if you want to see another 100 days. We barely scratched the surface of all the possibilities that we could do. And if you're new here, this video was inspired by Luke the Notable, but it's kind of cool that we have our own thing going now. Also, shout out to my merch, it's only going to be there for a limited time, and if you tweet me showing me that you bought my merch, I will follow you. Please buy it. Last but not least, please follow Follow my Twitter, I will follow every third person. Oh, and if you haven't watched the first 100 days, watch that first, because then this video wouldn't make any sense to you, so yeah. It's day 101, and we're back at our new base that we stole from someone else. I thought it would be smart to put on a resource pack to make things actually look good. Oh wow, everything looks like mumbo jumbo now. Our first day back in a blood moon was already rising, so I used this time to th actually think what I was gonna do for this 100 days. Wow, we used to live here. Oh! Hi, spider pig. The next day, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had so much loot from the last 100 days, but now I actually understand what they do. I wanted to start this 100 days strong, so I decided to make a portal. With the power of popular MMOs, it turns out I could make this. Whatever this scary portal looks like. I guess just YOLO gamer swag, right? Ah, you think darkness is your strength? I was born in it. Molded by it. And we were given some mysterious key. <laughs> I just realized it's really dark in there and I had no torches and we're going back in with torches Each room was filled with different types of mobs after killing those mobs You could get a key that allows you to open another room <laughs> There was a lot of loot as well every room seemed to follow the exact same pattern. It seemed almost endless Oh, this room has ores don't mind if I do all oh, the explode next room, please Oh, what is that not wanted to deal with whatever that was? So I just took all the loot and left but this time it said frick you and spawned me a hundred blocks away from my base day one three i had to take all my loot and put in all my storage system this warehouse chest is honestly a life savior i could search for any item that i needed by just typing and it stored so many items i ain't afraid of no bookshelves let's go it wanted me to complete like some sort of maze but i just broke through everything and took all the loot every room after that was just the same i was a bit jealous that these zombies had better looking swords than i did i also found a skeleton with a dispenser on his head what like seriously bro what is this and then we finally made it the actual boss room i used the these rooms as an advantage because I had a bow that had infinity so I could shoot him all day. Haha, <laughs> poor Wither couldn't even get through. Oh, now's not the time, Windows support. Poor little Wither was too fat to get through the doors. It didn't even drop another star, so I was pretty upset when I went to bed. The next day, I transferred all the loot from my backpack into the storage system. Bro, what is that weird thing? No, I'm talking about me. Why do I look like this? Bro, look at my head. Look at that dude. <laughs> I also decided not to waste my levels because Lapis doesn't work in this mod pack. I had a lot of different ores and I did some research here and there to see what was important and not. Most of it was pretty useless. I wanted to travel just a little bit more before we started working on our base. Karen the ostrich was still alive, so I think it was time to get some more loot. We came across a couple castles as usual, and this time I had no trouble looting it all up. I came across of something really interesting called the Thunder Staff. Oh, I gotta try this out. Goodbye, Mr. Wasp. Oh, rip tree. Oh, you like this house? Ha <laughs> ha, no house no more. I came across baby dragons? Is that even possible? I quickly made a portal back to my base because I learned that you needed beef in order to tame them. Hey, now we had pet dragons. That pooped out coal. They were also actually pretty strong too, so they made clearing mobs so much easier. And would you look at that, a village means free loot. I came across the funniest thing, Kendrick the child. I forced the child to follow me and fight against his will. It was another blood moon, but honestly, with the dragon's help, not even skeletons with blasters could stop us. It was day 108, and it was time to continue our travels. There were a lot of chests in the open, so my inventory was filling up pretty quickly. Oh, another house. Damage, damage, damage! Destroy it all! No, Karen! We lost Karen so I took out my rage on the fishermen. Oh, uh, Kendrick the child is on fire now. Everyone in my party eventually died from my own hands. Oh, you guys are cyclopses? Meet my lightning staff. Your point is now invalid. For the nice set, I just made a quick stop by a trading village. Hoping for some good loot, I just met some demon cows instead. The next day was here, and look what we came across. These trees used to be the fright of my life, but now I am stronger than ever. I destroyed their entire house. Ha <laughs> ha! I only had two more shots of my lightning staff, so might as well use it on whatever these guys are doing. Doing. Ooh. They weren't very happy about it, so they started burning down the entire forest. Smokey would not be very happy right now. I didn't realize how amazing Karen the ostrich was because now going across these mountains, I really wish I had her. It was day 110 and almost every single backpack was full of loot. Honestly, the cats in this game are really, really weird. I didn't like the whole swamp biome kind of thing, so I just traveled the ocean. I got attacked by something and they almost killed me and I have no idea what it was. When I finally crashed on land, some demon chickens were waiting for me. Honestly, there's nothing normal about this game 
anymore. I found a different looking castle before I raided it. I slept for the night. It was a new day and it was raiding time. I was basically a master at killing these guys. The inside was a lot more different. There was a lot more chests, but not as good as loot. I didn't have any more room in my inventory or backpack, so I just set up a portal going back home. And that's when I found it. Their secret layer. There was some sort of password protection on it, so I made sure there was no lava beneath, but it only looked like more chests. Even though it was nighttime and I could just break in, I wanted to figure out the passcode, which I did. The other door had two levers, one that opened the door and the other opened the lava pit. Making sure there was no way I would fall into the lava, I placed blocks in there. There was so much loot in all these chests, if it wasn't for the portal gun and backpack, there would be no way I could take all of this. Look at all that loot. After moving all the loot from this castle to my castle, I just had to make sure if there was any more secret rooms. There wasn't. Did I tell you guys I got an assault rifle? Yeah, I wasted all the ammo in them on these yetis, but it was totally worth it. The next day, I explored the rest of the snow biome because I wanted to see if there was anything else that was crazy. I found this weird hole in the ground with these weird creatures and uh, no, I wasn't gonna touch that. I was ready to pack up and go home, but there was a village that was burning. Austin the guard, how are you asking me? It's good to see me when your whole village is on fire. I got out of there before the night because it looks like there was another blood moon. There was an angry neighbor outside my castle shooting arrows. I tried to see what it was, but I couldn't see it. In the morning, I decided I was done exploring for a little bit and it was time to do some home improvements. I first filled in my storage room with redstone lamps because I thought it would look really cool. I wanted to get as much birch wood as possible because I thought stone bricks and birch went really good together. I chopped down as many trees as I could before the night fell. I tried to make some cool design out of stairs and slabs, but <laughs> it didn't really work out so well. I even fixed it up and it still looked pretty bad. <laughs> I kept things simple by putting the birch wood with the stone slabs and wow, that actually looks really good. The sides were filled with stone bricks, but I didn't really feel that. Bro, look at this Minecraft noob doesn't even know how to make an item frame. The next day, I finished up my storage system by labeling them using item frames rather than signs. I was thinking why I didn't make this actually at eye level. I destroy all the chests behind the control blocks so I can move the entire storage room up a block. This took forever because there were so many items I had to put back into the storage system. Bruh. Day 116 was here and I was nearly complete with my entire storage system. I made a really cool design using the stone slabs around the wooden planks that was actually pretty impressive. And ta-da! Our finished storage system! And then I spent the rest of the day getting some research points because now I actually understand what they do! The next day I saw that I actually had a ton of music discs. This made researching a lot more dramatic. I was screenshotting important recipes on a Google browser so I wouldn't forget them. So you're probably wondering what I was researching. Boom, tree farm, and I still have no idea how it works. After reading some more wiki pages, I learned that I needed workers in order to power these stations. But before I did that, I found a good place to place my tree farm. It was day 118 and it was time to make some slaves. I mean workers, but I don't pay them. Minecraft didn't like this, so it crashed my game. <laughs> and voila, our first worker, but but he seemed to be hungry and he didn't do anything. Yeah, we'll let that. Okay. So we can turn that off. So it turns out they need something called a town hall where I have to put in food because they won't work without food. I finally made it, but it became nighttime. And the next day, boom, I put in the town hall and all I had to do was put food inside. And then you have to give them the tool of what you want. So I want a lumberjack, so I gave him an ax. Look at him go, he's actually planting the saplings. That's incredible. Go new master, go. So if my research was correct, he's gonna plant the saplings here and anything in this area, he'll cut, destroy, replant. It's just fully automated. I don't even have to pay him. As you guys saw, I could change his name, but it turns out I could also change his skin, but that didn't work out so well. What happened? Look at his head. He's so deformed. New master, no. The next five days took way too much to do so little. I didn't only want a tree farm, but I wanted a wheat farm and a sugarcane farm and basically every farm ever. I had to change how all my original farms look so they would fit in the automation zone. The automation zone is that kind of white box it creates, and that's why my cow farm did didn't work. My cage was just too big. I ended up having three workers up here, one for each of the farms. So yeah, my old base is now like a farming area for all these workers. On day 126, I wanted to spend some more time in my old base because I wanted to see how efficient these workers were. I have to be honest, sometimes they acted really weird and kind of wandered off on their own. Like, what is this guy doing? Well, with all the glitches and bugs away, it seems to be working pretty well. The day after, I learned if I'm not loaded in the chunks near the workers, they won't work. After doing some research, 
research and crafting, I learned there's something called a chunk loader, which basically loads that chunk. That little green box I made is called a chunk loader that loads like a 16 by 16 area or something. I was 100% sure I was doing this wrong. I guess we'll just find out. If I'm not there and they're getting materials, then it's working. Day 128 was a big day because I wanted to research a worker that could mine blocks. The only problem is that the research required iron and I didn't have any iron left. I found a couple pieces here and there, but it was nowhere near enough yet. Luckily, there was a lot of chests I didn't loot in that weird cave dimension or whatever. The next day, I still didn't have enough iron, so I had to do a little bit of off-camera mining. Haha. <laughs> and for some reason, this is also the first time I was mining diamonds? I would spend the entire day, but now I had enough iron in order to get my mining research done. The next day, I learned that I had enough iron, but now I had to make Minecraft rails. However, in modern Minecraft, you can't just make rails. Of course, it has to be overly complicated. I had to make this thing called like a rolling machine, and I didn't know how to work it. Look at this thing. It needed like power and heat, and you have to cool it down with water. Why is this so complicated? But after a lot of trial and error, the machine was actually heating up. All that hard work was actually paying off. It's working! I used this rolling machine to make side rails and those side rails would become normal rails yeah it was way over complicated well that was taking forever i had to also make regular rails and of course those were also over complicated long story short i needed clay but that was kind of a problem when thousands of mobs spawned in the water so i just left tomorrow's problem to tomorrow's me today was a big day and that was to get clay aka mission impossible because everything wanted to kill me and i actually nearly died but i finally found a good spot to get clay i got as much clay as i possibly could before the knife fell because I never wanted to do this again. You're probably asking, why do you need this clay? Well, I need to turn the clay into bricks and the bricks will turn into this like mega furnace and that mega furnace will make what I need to make the rails. Yeah, overcomplicated. Before I went to bed, I cleared up some room for the furnace. I turned the clay into this Coke oven brick and if I put this in a three by three area, it would make this furnace. Well, would you look at that? It worked. You guys want to know something funny? That everything I just did was completely useless because then I learned I could make the quarry without actually doing anything what I just did. I was kind of relieved because there were still a lot more steps I had to do for this mining research or whatever. It was day 133 and it was time to start off with the slave, I mean mining workers. I had to make another of these home stations and I realized I might not have enough food. Nothing to worry about now and now we have our first miner and we're gonna name him your mom. Your mom is actually going to the working station, yay! Look at them go, your mom and your dad's now mining away. We will skip to the next day and they sort of ran into a problem. They just dug themselves into a hole and they, now they can't get out. And you know my chunk loader in the other castle it didn't seem to be working because the loot wasn't that great the next day i was able to get the miners out but this time they didn't fall in so that was great i also noticed that they didn't mine like important blocks so i had to upgrade their system to diamond and even better news i was actually even able to finish the mining research but future me knows i didn't do anything with it i spent the next two days doing a lot of makeovers i first upgraded my store system with a lot more slots so now it can hold even more items i destroyed a lot of the interior of the castle because i wanted to have room for the stuff I wanted to put in. This included the king's chambers and even that little secret room I showed you last episode. During all this time, look how deep the hole is. The only problem is that I didn't see your dad anywhere. He probably left long a time ago when he said he was going to the go to the ice cream shop, but he never came back. I even made more mine areas because I really wanted the whole underground to be completely empty. It was day 138 and look how many workers I made. With so many miners, they were able to dig the hole so fast, but they kept on filling up these chests, so I had to quickly empty them every time. Also, there were still chests under the base, so I had to quickly get all the loot from there before the miners destroyed everything. The next day was more of the same. The first hole was basically already completed. The best part of all of this is that whatever they mine, I get to keep. They even found me a Harry Potter broom that I could actually fly? It crashed my game really quickly. I finished up the day by learning that I could actually make those cool looking gates that I fell in love with at the beginning of this game. Day 140, baby, was all about these gates. If I did my research correctly, I was able to build these gates wherever and whenever. And I should be able to open them by just right clicking and what the? That gate looks weird. Of course, I make my gate non-symmetrical. Oh, that hurts. Forgetting about the other gate, I had to destroy this drawbridge because technically it wasn't mine. And what I mean by that, if the drawbridge is mine, I can just open it by right clicking it. Now this is honestly an epic gamer moment. The next day was pretty lame because I was just messing with my drawbridge when the snake attacked me in my own moat. I kind of forgot that I was in hardcore, meaning if I die, I lose everything. I did some research on some armor I could make, but I wasn't there yet. I didn't have the material. The next day I found out that I forgot about my workers. And wow, did they dig a lot of holes, but a lot of them got stuck. They mined so much stuff, I had to transfer all of that into my storage system. One of the holes were complete, so I wanted to block it off, but lag almost killed me and I 
almost fell into the lava and now I was stuck with the miners. I am a soulless creature, so I left them to die as I made my escape. You might be asking, why are you building giant holes right under your base? Well, I want to have a multi-level base under my castle, so everything I need is in this certain area. Trust me, it's going to look amazing, so you better hit that like button so we can get another 100 days after this as well. On day 143, I learned that I could make an elevator using wool and ender pearls. The sad news is that I didn't even have enough ender pearls to make one. I wanted some elevator slash teleporter so I could get up and down really quickly because now we have giant holes in our base. I decided that we're just gonna go with the classic stairs, so we started clearing out a huge area in the back, so that's where the stairs would be. Day 144, and I thought of the craziest thing ever. You know how hundreds of mobs were always spawning in the water? Well, I thought it was a great idea if we went to the nether and got lava buckets so we could actually patch all the water up. This was the dumbest thing I'd done in the series yet because not only do the pigmen have assault rifles that I had to deal with you know how actually dangerous this was i could have died any time here and when i actually got the lava buckets on land it was so laggy anyway i could barely move there were so many mobs there good job socks for one this would only take 5.6 years of non-stop lag the next day i came back to my senses and started working on my base again i had to move everything from the middle of the base to the side of the base because i was clearing out the entire middle including the workers but luckily i could just pick them up and then place them down like blocks i started working on this giant doorway so every time i came Came back home to my base through the portals it would actually be a cool entrance however minecraft didn't really like my style so much because they crashed my game again i didn't even like what i built so i destroyed it again it triggers me quite a lot it's the use of glowstone. The next day I felt ready and refreshed and I knew exactly how I wanted this to look. I actually wanted the storage system to be seen and used the slabs to complement that. If you ignore the left side, the right side is the coolest looking storage system ever. I really didn't like this orange so I destroyed it immediately. And I forgot to tell you guys the mining upgrade was actually useful because I could increase the size of where they could mine so that was amazing. Day 147 is a little embarrassing but I'm still really proud of myself. Like I said, using these portals are usually the way I enter my base so i had to make a really cool entrance every time i come into the base i didn't even finish it but this is all i did the entire day i tried to make some like cool design and then it would turn into like this cave thing but you know how hard it is to do this honestly i should have just put these two days together it took me the entire next day just to finish this cool arch kind of thing i put the next five days in a speed lapse because i did a lot of breaking and building just you know the usual minecraft things firstly i created a copy of the arch on the other side because eventually i wanted to put a roof over it you remember that snow castle we raided earlier that place had a ton of vines and even the mossy stone bricks i put them on my base so i would have a lot more when they started growing and then i could put them all around my base to create this kind of mossy green environment kind of thing i even spent a lot of time expanding my lava army because it's actually kind of working you see there's no mob spawning it was day 155 and it was time to check on my miners progress your mom was still alive so that was great news the whole strip was almost completely mined out and over here is where we're gonna put the giant staircase that will allow me to go from level to level i can already imagine multiple different levels holding different sort of things and even use the caves to get to one place to another we had another blood moon meaning i couldn't sleep so i actually started working on the staircase but something really weird was happening there was like a force pulling me in like some sort of black hole and i could barely move i found the weirdest looking thing it was like pulling me in and i got like a little too close and now i couldn't even move i literally couldn't get out of this situation i literally spent the entire night like this because i was contacting people on discord how do i get out of this i didn't want my whole thing to end like this i tried attacking it pickaxing nothing worked and even the wiki said i need some sort of complex machine because it is an actual black hole it's crazy to me that i would have to end the series because i was stuck on a black hole and i couldn't escape at all but turns out i could have just used half slabs if i didn't have half slabs in my inventory i would have been stuck there forever i made sure i would go nowhere near that again so i made a barrier about 10 blocks up and since i still had time of the day i started making the staircase that would lead me all the way up it was day 157 and even though the miners mined out a lot I still needed them to mine out this whole left chunk so I could continue the staircase I decided since I had so much resources why not just make a ton of miners But then I also realized most of them would just die anyway So I just spawned two <laughs> I changed my mind the next day and I spawned all of them They were mining so fast I had to keep on clearing out their chests I didn't do much this day either I kind of left it all to the AIs I guess I was just becoming old and lazy because I just started planting slime trees You heard me there's trees that grow and give you slime balls
balls. Then I spent the rest of the day looking at these awesome pickaxes that I could craft, but I needed materials from the nether. And that's why the next day I decided I have to go to the nether. But this time I also tested if I had a good ranged weapon. And could you believe that bird I just killed gave me rubies? All I was thinking at this moment was please don't die. I got a nice warm greeting of assault rifles to my face. I killed so many of the assault rifle pigmen that they gave me their assault rifle and I used that against them. Honestly, it wasn't enough though. They just kept on spawning and spawning like infinite pressure. I dug myself into safety and I was out of there. It was day 161 and look, my slime trees actually grew. I checked on my miners progress and wow, they mined out the entire lane. We had a lot more room to start working on an underground base, but we needed a lot more mining done. I decided to get every single best ore from my chest and see the best possible thing I could make right now. You remember that bird that dropped those two rubies? Well, a ruby sword does 21 attack damage. I checked every ore to see how strong they were and it turns out this emmerich triangle looking thing, it was so strong. The whole set was over 30 protection. That's as if I was having three sets of diamond armor on. I put it for safekeeping because I didn't want to use it till I enchanted it. Talking about enchantments, the next day I set up my enchantment table all over again. And since lapis enchanting doesn't exist, I couldn't waste any levels. Meaning whenever I'm 30, I have to enchant a piece of armor. I spent the rest of the day working on my staircase because the miners already cleared out the entire section. It's gonna be a long process, but it's gonna be totally worth it. And that's what I did the whole next day. Look at that bird thing. I got stuck in the black hole. Now I can't leave. Ah! And just a couple more blocks and well, bam, that is the whole right side completed. The next day, I just had to keep up the grind. I had to do the entire left side now. This took longer because I had to do a little bit more clearing. I worked through the entire night, but it was totally worth it because we were nearly there. Just a couple staircases here and there and oh my goodness. Does that look amazing? I was so pumped for this day. Look how big my slime farm has grown. Instantly satisfied. I cleaned up my stairs a little bit and don't laugh at me, but it kind of took me the entire rest of the day just to make this gate. The worst part about it, I didn't even like it. Day 166 is actually the day I almost died. I mean, it was actually the day after it, but this kind of led up to it. It was a blood moon this night, meaning I couldn't sleep, so I just did some home improvements. The only problem is that mobs can spawn anywhere and this Enderman came out of nowhere and he had a giant freaking sword. I closed myself up for the rest of the night. Nope, nope, nope. And this is the worst part. In the morning, the mobs don't despawn and they kill all my workers on top of that those weird cats kept on spawning that don't take any melee damage so all i could do was run away i tried to break through the top but of course look at that dude he was waiting for me i tried to do some weird block kung fu action but it just made things worse luckily they stayed down there so i was able to get my bow and end all their careers day 168 i knew i need some security so i took all the turrets from my old base into my new base and i put them all around i charged these babies up and if you haven't noticed i did spawn the miners back in but I forgot to record it, so oof. Day 169. I wanted to go on an adventure because I needed a lot more XP and I didn't know how else to get it. It was a pretty good idea, but most of the mobs were too scary to fight. But I did find a couple of these coin things, so that was pretty cool. And whatever that thing was, I guess. I did come across this giant mansion, though, that looked amazing. There wasn't any loot inside, though, except for this weird Hero Brian summoning center. I'll give you the highlights of the next five days because I was kind of going all over the place and I didn't really know what I was doing. I found this cool meta shack with decent loot, but not nothing too special. My main goal was to find a mob spawner because I wanted to get as much XP as possible. I went through many caves, but this one was definitely the most promising. I fought some pretty funky mobs, so that was a pretty good start. Now here's where I spent the most time. I found a mine shaft, but there was so much oil going around, like I couldn't really do anything. Instead of going around like a normal person, of course, I went right through it. I thought the spawners would be like hidden behind the oil, but no. And look at this dude that I found. There was a clown, an actual clown. How is that even possible? It should have gave me much more XP. After searching cave after cave, I finally found a spawner, but it was a cave spider spawner. Are you serious? No, I didn't want to deal with that at all, so I just took the XP. It was day 176, and I returned from my travels. During those five days, I forgot that there was actually spawners right outside my castles. Yeah, you remember these scorpions that sound like frogs? Well, yeah, they actually have spawners. In my eyes, this was the perfect place to make an XP farm because it was already in a box. The next day, I already started putting this to work, baby. I was going to make a scorpion blender. I was already starting starting to develop some sort of kill zone, but I didn't know exactly what to do. It was kind of annoying because the scorpions kept on spawning outside their box. Or should I say frogs? Whatever. They wouldn't stop spawning outside. I started putting in the final part so the water would go over and push all the scorpion looking boys into the kill center. I let it open and it seemed to be kind of working.
dying. I mean, they were dying before they were even reaching the end. It was good until I saw the rats were still going through and the scorpions kept on spawning outside. I spent the entire next day boxing it all up so nothing would spawn on the outside. Nobody was going to leave my spawn chamber. This took longer than usual because they kept on spawning even though I was trying to not make them spawn. And I sealed it all off by putting half slabs on the top so nothing would spawn on the top. Day 179 is a day to remember. Even after my amazing fortification, they kept on spawning on the outside. And for no reason at all, Silverfish started spawning and destroyed all the stone bricks which made all the scorpions go loose. I quickly tried to change it to wood and it seemed to work for a little bit. But these weird dogs, man, I don't even know. Look, they're spawning on the outside. I was so done at this point. The next day, I completely gave up on that operation and I started brand new on I actually- Oh, what is that guy doing? How is that guy in the overworld? While I waited for the Emperor Scorpion to despawn, like I said, we needed more XP in order to upgrade our amazing green armor. There was another froggy scorpion spawner on the other side of my castle, but this time I made sure to take all precautions. I made the concealment out of wood and I made sure there would be no way they would be able to spawn from the top. Little scorpion boys didn't know who they were messing with. And before I went to bed, I made sure to clear all the miners chests because they mine indefinitely. I will summarize the next five days because I had to make the XP farm all over again. The other spawner was a test round and now I won't make any mistakes. But even after all of this, I still didn't know the best way in order to get XP from them. I started with one where I would attack them from above, but they didn't even come near. Even a fence gate didn't work so well because they were still able to attack me through it. I even tried like an onslaught mode where I would just kill them instantly when they came by, but that just seemed too manual. I eventually sticked with the fence one for now and even set up a hopper system to pick up all the items. This was the best I could do for right now and at least it gave me XP. Day 187, I just did a little home improvements to make the XP farm look a little better. I don't know how these rascals kept on spawning on the outside. Maybe it was just natural spawning. On top of that, I actually found a better way to do this where I would actually attack them from under. I did accidentally break a block and they were set loose for a while and I started screaming. The next day I did set up my enchantment table so I wasn't wasting any levels. I only had a couple more pieces to enchant anyway. I even blocked off a huge portion of the spawner so they wouldn't even spawn anywhere near me. I also wanted to change the position of the chest and hoppers but that was a little difficult. I spent this entire day eating grilled cheese and hacking at scorpions. The next morning I learned that the miners are actually loaded in when I'm doing the XP farm so they were mining like crazy. There was a lot of blocks I had to transfer to my storage system. I also checked up on my other farms but I accidentally punched a cow so that didn't end up very good. And I spent the rest of the day smacking some scorpions. And even all night. It was day 190 and my full enchanted set was almost ready. Turns out I could make something called an advanced enchantment table that would allow me to repair my armor using XP. This would be an absolute life savior because then I could repair my armor without using the same material. I could just use XP. I accidentally punched the cows again and I almost died. I'm pretty sure I'm part of the matrix or something because if I wasn't, I would have been dead already. Today was a really big day because today is the day I fully finished my armor. And also turns out those scorpions give titanium and uranium so that would be really good for the next hundred days. Our final piece is finally being enchanted. It is the ruby sword. It will become the ultimate devastation weapon. We are fully equipped and it's time to kick some butt. I knew exactly what kind of boss fight I wanted to go through so I got fully equipped. These next seven days we were gonna go through the ultimate challenge. We were gonna fight the biggest and baddest bosses for what I could find in this heaven portal. And something did catch my eye. It was this weird looking brick structure kind of thing. You are attempting the sliders labyrinth on your own. This dungeon is a very dangerous place and you can lose all your items as a result. Are you prepared to enter these deaths? Now that's what I'm talking about baby. I spent an entire real day in these labyrinths so that's why I'm assuming it's about seven Minecraft days. Bro I fought against these mean iron golem looking boys that did some weird drug motion thing. Oh it was totally worth it though. There was chest- Ah! What was that? I probably fought a hundred of these iron golem boys and then there was these jumping bouncing boys that I don't even know man. This place was crazy and I thought it couldn't get any worse. There was this giant spinning fan looking boy. He was trying to cool me down and then he started breaking apart. I think I was killing him. I don't even know. This dude was freaky and I wanted him out of my sights. And then there was another boss. He was a giant box but he didn't really do much so I didn't even yeah. And then I spent another three hours fighting these dudes that put me on some sort of drug and my whole field of view is like, whoa! Why are there so many of them here? Like, I literally can't even focus! And then we found it, the big boss room. And what? One more key? What do you mean key? I haven't gotten any keys. And I figured out these guys aren't bosses, they're like mini bosses, and they're the key fragments. This was it, the big day 200, where we're gonna fight the big bad baddie. I would just like to thank anyone for coming this far in this video, and you deserve not one, but two gold stars. 
stars. This guy is kind of scary. He's just like a giant box kind of thing. I have no idea what to expect. And he can only be hurt by pickaxes. Oh my god. Okay, he's a moving box. This cardboard box guy kept on knocking me around like some sort of plastic bag, man. He has no manners. He almost killed me too. He knocked me into the wall and I started suffocating. Like what? I was actually dying. Could you believe if I died right now on day 200? But luckily I got out using my amazing magic broom. I was honestly hoping for some super secret ability, but he was literally just a giant box. Hey, 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 we did it. Thank you guys so much for watching me survive 200 days of hardcore. If you made it this far, you deserve not one, but two gold stars. If you haven't already, please follow my Twitter so you can keep up to date with awesome funny moments and whatever. Yeah, just follow my Twitter right now.